Welcome back to another mini PC review. I've got another two planned this month and in the channel not too long ago, only about a week and a half ago, I reviewed the B-Link GTI series, which is more powerful than this one. This here is more low power consumption. It's slightly cheaper. It is called the B-Link SEI. This one is powered by a Core i3, it's 10th gen. It is the 1011-0U with two cores, four threads, maximum turbos, 4.1 gigahertz. Now this configuration will come with either eight gigabytes of RAM, a single SODIUM in there, or 16, and up to 512 gigabytes of storage. It also does take a 2.5 inch drive. This mini PC supports wireless six as well, Intel's AX200 card. And in my time using this one here, there are definitely a couple of things you should know about that I will cover in this in-depth review before you consider getting here the B-Link SEI. Inside the box, you will find a bit of paperwork here, so that's a user manual. There's also a hard disk installation, guys. We've got a long HDMI cable, a short HDMI cable. This is if you were to mount it on the back of a TV or a monitor. That is the Visa mounting bracket. And then we have a SATA 3 cable and the screws required for the mounting bracket and also for a 2.5 inch drive. And then our power supply, so this one is 19 volts, 3 amps, maximum output is 51 watts. So on the front of the mini PC, similar to other B-Link mini PCs from them, we have the CMOS reset right here. So if you press a paper clip into this, this will reset the BIOS if you do happen to mess up any of those unlocked advanced settings. Two USB 3.0 ports, Type-C there, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with mic support and our power button. On the rear here, we've got our exit vents. All the hot air is being pushed out of that. Air gets sucked in from the left and from the right here. And this is where there is also a micro SD card slot. Now I've tested out the speeds on this one. It seems to be capped at USB 2 speed. So not an ultra high speed card reader, unfortunately. Two HDMI 2.0 A's right here, so we can run two 4K displays. That is our DC power in. Another two USB 3 ports, gigabit LAN there. So that covers it for all of the ports on this. This lid is made out of plastic, just like the whole build of this one for the wireless reception, they've done this. So we have the sticker there for the Core i3. This one is the 1011-0U, and that's 10th gen, of course. And then on the other side, you will find here the two screw mounting points for the Visa bracket. If you wanted to mount this on the back of a TV or a monitor, you can do so. And there would normally be four screws here rubber feet, and they're just inside the screws. But I've already removed them, so we can take a look at our internals with this model. So there we have the NVMe drive. This is the one that comes pre-installed, 256 gigabytes. And then we've got one sodium populated out of two, DDR4 right here. So that is eight gigabytes. And what I'm gonna do is add an additional eight gigabytes so we can run this at the maximum performance. So running that RAM in dual channel, Right now it's configured just in single channel configuration, of course. And if you were going to be mounting a 2.5 inch drive, this is where it goes. So with the screws that I showed you before when you looked at the internals, you screw the 2.5 inch SSD or hard drive here, and then you plug it in just down there as well. And that all goes back together like so. Now the BIOS for this mini PC is completely unlocked to us. We've got all of those advanced settings, all that you can imagine can be tweaked and changed here. Overclocking performance menu is not what you think it is, okay? This is not overclocking, but we can undervolt from here. You can change memory timings and things like that if you wanted to try that. Although this is a low-end mini PC, it's a low-end Core i3, I wouldn't really be too fast with that. But hey, it's good having the option right there. Boot menu can be changed, of course. There's various other different settings in there too. So I'm gonna jump into Windows now and we'll have a look at how things perform. So on first boot, you should be greeted with the following menu here. These are the pre-installed language packs that are part of this Windows 10 image. So looking briefly at our devices here, the SSD, 256 gigabytes, who do not know the brand. It seems to be their own brand or some other brand that doesn't just list it. Device ID shows nothing, okay? But here are the speeds. It is not bad. It's NVMe, it is not the fastest out there, but it is still three times the reads here, at least, than a SATA 3, almost three times as fast. So Windows 10 Pro is the version it comes installed with, 2004. Of course, you need to run updates, get the security patches, and everything like that. 
Free available space on the drive on the first boot is about 197 gigabytes. And then, of course, the CPU on this one. It is the Core i3, two cores, maximum turbo is 4.1, and it does have four threads. And the memory speeds you can see here running in dual channel, not a problem. I did end up adding 32 gigabytes in total because I could not find my 8 gigabyte stick to make it 16 gigabytes overall. The Wi-Fi 6, this is running just fine. Maximum throughput with my router is about 1.5 gigabits per second. And we have the Realtek gigabit LAN card that is installed on this. So just how does this mini PC perform? Well, I haven't noticed any serious lag in Windows 10. It seems to be fine getting in around your files. That sort of thing won't be slow. That is relatively quick and even spreadsheets. So I do have, this is just a document open. It's quite a large one and the performance is fine. The single core speed from this particular mini PC is not actually too bad. I mean, it's 4.1 gigahertz and it does fine for these kind of lighter computing. And this is what these kind of mini PCs are ideal for. So a large spreadsheet here, which is some 700 pages, not a problem. So I won't go too deep into that kind of performance because that is just fine. No lag there. And what about video files? So if you're going to use this for a media file player, then that's great. But be aware that the 4K ports on this only support 4K 30 hertz. I thought it was meant to be HDMI 2 spec, uh, but I cannot get, I've tested and tested, I cannot get any of the ports to run 4K 60, which is really disappointing. But it'll play those files just fine. So that's a 4K high bit rate one right there. Uh, Jellyfish 140, that's 10 bit, fine, okay? Not a problem, HEVC codec, a little bit just slow just then. But in general, it, it decodes it just fine. The UHD graphics, it's native decoding. So no real massive issue with that there. And then that brings me to our thermals. Let's take a look at them. It's been a few hours now that I've been running this and I've been doing all sorts of stress testing, a bit of gaming too, and even playing some old Diablo Lord of Destruction, Diablo 2 on this. And you can see that, well, it did hit 88 degrees. That was the core max. And yes, it did trigger thermal throttling. So not ideal. We don't want to be seeing this. The fan noise, it spikes, it comes and goes. It does turn itself off at some point. And here is a sample. This is under full load of what you can expect from this mini PC. It's not loud. It's definitely no gaming laptop, but it makes a little bit noise than some of the other ones I've reviewed in the channel. And I do have some notes right here on the kind of wattage from the Powerwall meter that I've been looking at here. So under idle, so just sitting there not really doing anything, it's very good. Three to about four and a half watts idle. Now, if you're in Chrome, depending on how many tabs you do have open, so I've had about, say, five or six open, it'll be around about eight watts, eight to 10 sometimes. And then gaming, that is when you see it peak to about 26 watts. So very good. This is a, a low power consumption chipset. I mean, it's only a dual core with the four thread. So it's, it's to be expected really from this particular spec of mini PC. And here are the benchmarks that I have run on this mini PC. So you can see the single core score, that's not actually too bad at all. The last mini PC I looked at with the Core i5, which had the 8259U in there, got a very similar score, but double the multi-core score because that one has four cores, whereas this only has the two cores, the four threads. And that's why it is a little bit low here with Geekbench 5. The other test I did run was PC Mark, and the score is, well, it's... It's okay. I mean, this is definitely better than the Gemini Lake. It's a little bit higher there. And the graphics score too here from Night Raid. This one, 4,581 for UHD integrated graphics is, um, yeah, it's nothing wonderful at all. It's, it's low end, okay? And pass mark. So this score here, just over 2,000, 2,204 points here. So those are benchmarks. You can run on your own little mini PC, your own laptop or whatever hardware to see if you're getting better performance here with this model, or you could actually be worse off, who knows? But make sure you do check this out first before you pull the trigger. And a brief look at gaming. This is some of my terrible Counter-Strike gameplay here. So 720p, I would not run this at 1080p because it's just not gonna be fast enough. I've seen around about 80 frames per second at the moment, lowest possible settings. And let's see how long I last, which will probably not be too long. See if there's anyone out here. Looks like there was someone there, but... Oh, no, he's got me. Ah, uh, yep, dead. Okay, that did not take long. 
So not amazing performance. This is not ideal for gaming, this spec, of course, but you can do a little bit of light gaming on the side if you wanted to do so with this mini PC. Just keep it to old titles like this one, ones that are not demanding. Finally, a quick test here of Linux support running fine. This is Linux Mint, their latest build, and no issues with the AX200 Wi-Fi 6 card in there. No problems. Everything is working, and it does run Linux quite well, considering the low-end hardware. So I just came from the B-Link GTI, and then stepping down to this model has been a little bit difficult for me. Not because of the gap in the performance, because the Core i3... This one here, the 10th gen, does perform well for your light tasks. It's very good on the power consumption as well. At idle, only using around 4 watts. And when in use, around 8 watts to 10 watts, depending on what you're doing. And up to 26 watts if you decided to do a little bit of light, older gaming on there. Old game titles, that is. This really all it can run. So it has that kind of performance for all your light computing. It's fine there. But for me, the big, the big deal breaker, for me at least, is I run 4K TV with uh, it's an OLED 120 hertz, and I can't even get 60 frames per second. I can't get the 60 hertz out of this because it's capping me and limiting me to only 4K 30 hertz, which is a true disappointment. Now the fan noise is one other little thing about this that's slightly bothersome, that it comes on and off. It's not that loud. It's only about 37 decibels, which is perfectly fine. It's acceptable for a mini PC, but then it runs into thermal throttling, that if it has the act of cooling the fan on there and it's only dual core with the four threads, why can it not handle it really? And why does it throttle there? It was not good to see. So those are two major things for me. And the other minor is, while well, the wireless card on this is very good. It's the Intel AX200. Great to see them using this with Bluetooth 5. However, it's soldered to the motherboard, which may be an issue for some people. If you wanted to replace that in the future, or you wanted to swap it out for, say, a Realtek card, uh, you cannot do it with this one. It does come configured with eight gigabytes, this unit that I have here, in single channel. Ideally, it should be dual channel. The drive on there, NVMe, it's faster than the SATA 3. You can add a SATA 3 2.5 inch drive to this, which is great. And I do love its very compact size and the fact that the build quality is excellent. Four screws, the whole rear plate comes off and I've got all the internals there exposed that I need if I wanted to swap out, add more RAM, change the SSD, add that 2.5 inch drive is very easy to do. And then the mounting bracket too is included. So I could mount this onto the back of my TV, mount it onto the back of a monitor as well, which is great. So there are some positives, but there are just too many cons in this particular model here for me to actually recommend it. So thank you so much for watching this review here of B-Link's SEI. Do check out my video. I have one as well of the GTI here from B-Link, which is a much better all-rounded mini PC with better performance, and it does support three displays at 4K 60 hertz, not like this one capped at 4K 30.